It's really important that, that we make a lot of apps, local content, stuff that's already in the uh, Apple App Store and, and Android Marketplace. Um, so, so these events, they're really important for the su success of Firefox OS. Uh, today, uh, we'll have this workshop where we'll go through a few apps. But first, I'll talk a little bit about, about uh, why uh, we're making Firefox OS and why the web as an ecosystem is so important and so good. So there's this business strategy. It's called Embrace, Extend, Extinguish. This name, it came from Microsoft because they had this, this, this strategy of embracing, uh, embracing open standards, such as SQL or, or documents. And, and, and then extend it, and then extinguish it. But, but they're most known for doing this with the web. They embrace the web by, by releasing Internet Explorer. And, and, and then they extended it with a bunch of features, uh, which Jan is going to talk a little bit more about. And, and, and then, oh. Yeah. So. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was telling. They were they were extending they were extending uh, Internet Explorer with with all these new features, so that if you wanted to view the web, you would have to view it using Internet Explorer, and in that way they extinguished all their competition. For example, their main competitor Netscape they they went out of business because of Internet Explorer. Uh, luckily, out of the remains of Netscape, we we got the Mozilla Foundation that that tried to open up the web again. And they did this by, by re reverse engineering a few pieces of, of, um, of Internet Explorer that Jan's going to mention. And, and, they then, um, and they then made people, or developers in general, really, really aware of making standards compliant websites. Not making websites that, that works in, in Internet Explorer, that looks great in Internet Explorer, but websites that follow the standards. And that allowed a bunch of people to make, a bunch of companies to make browsers. And there was a lot of competition for making the best browsing experience. And today, uh, when I use my services on my computer, I can use them no matter what operating system I'm using, no matter what browser I'm using, because all the, the services that, that I use, they're made with standards compliant uh, web technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So, so that's, that's really great. But, we all know that there was a paradigm shift in, uh, in 2007. The first working smartphone was released by, by, by uh, Apple. And it had this tiny web browser. So all, all the web that was made for the desktop, it didn't really work on this tiny screen. It was like too much on too little space. So web developers had a lot of, stuff, had a lot of work to do making the web work on mobile. But uh, these new smartphone makers, Apple and eventually Google, they had different plans. They, instead of making the web work on mobile, they decided to make their own platforms. There are, so, so we all know how it is today on mobile. We have these native applications and, and they're, really, they're greatly supported by, by Apple and Google. So if you're a developer today targeting mobile, it's crazy to, uh, to use web technologies because the native technologies is so much better supported. It's so much, uh, it's possible to do so much more with, with the native platforms. And one company, oh yeah, sorry. And, um, and uh, there has, but of course, there has been a few attempts at making, um, at making, um, uh, making the web work on mobile, making these, these native experiences uh, available uh, for web developers uh, and things like PhoneGap, where where um, where the web is extended with with mobile technologies and and it's working quite all right. But there's a lot of layers and it's it's really difficult to make make your app on top of a layer, which which enables the phone on top of uh, yeah, just like just a bunch of layers that is really hard to do. One company that made their entire company on on, uh, on the web, Facebook, they, they did this for a long time, trying to use web technologies on the phone, but they, they last year, they sort of like gave up and said that the web, it's not ready for, uh, for the smartphone yet. Uh, and they had to go all native and make native applications. So the web on mobile so far, there's been a lot of setbacks. 
but the web in general has been uh, pushing the boundaries at an amazing rate. Um, yeah, there's this term called evergreen browsers. Those are browsers that auto-update themselves. So whenever your browser vendor has a new version of the browser, it will just automatically update without you, the user, having to do anything. And that's, that's been really great for the web because that means that most users, they always have the latest technologies, the latest web standards available. So developers can just target really, um, really new features. They don't have to think that much about backwards compatibility anymore. And that allows browsers to, uh, or that allows web developers and, and browser makers to, to experiment and push the web forward at a really amazing rate. So these really complex new technologies that are coming to the web today, uh, it's things like uh, WebGL, which enables, which enables graphics, uh, the graphics hardware directly in the web so you can get, make this great gaming experience. And there's things like WebRTC, where a browser can connect directly to another browser without, without any server, without uh, any intermediate, and they can communi communicate using video or voice or arbitrary data. And these are really, really complex technologies that are being standardized today. And tomorrow, we'll have even more complex stuff, even cooler stuff. There's this thing called web components, which will allow us to make um, uh, these UI, UI elements that we can, uh, that we can uh, share and compose in these really cool ways that, so that tomorrow we'll, we'll make even cooler stuff on the web that's, that's, uh, that will enable great user experiences. And tomorrow we'll hopefully also get proper mobile integration, the stuff that's lacking on the mobile web today. Um, and the reason that all this, all this innovation is possible is because of the, web, the way the web is structured. There's no one company that owns the web. There's no, there's no Google that decides, yeah, this goes into the platform, this goes out. The way it works is that everyone focuses on what, they're, what they care about. Currently, Google is making these web components. Mozilla, they're focusing on mobile. Microsoft, they're doing DRM. They're doing all these things for, uh, for the web. And the technologies that wins, the technologies that becomes part of the web, they're the technologies that we, the, the end users, the, the ones that we care about. So, so an example is, is WebGL. WebGL, uh, that the, the technology that enables graphics in the browser, 3D graphics, uh, was originally um, it, Microsoft, which has a great browser share, they didn't really like it. They have the best gaming platform currently. And they didn't want the web. Uh, they didn't want you to be able to to make great games on the web, so they didn't support WebGL. But the other browser vendors, they just went ahead and made it. And and users uh, and web developers, they really liked it. And they did great things with WebGL. So now it's like it's part of the web. And if Microsoft doesn't implement WebGL, they're going to have a crappy browser. So they're sort of like forced to implement WebGL. And, and this distributed way of innovation and this like the best technologies, they're the ones who become part of the web. This way of managing an ecosystem, that's like, that's really great. And that's why the web is so important, unlike these other mo mobile ecosystems with just one person controlling them or one company. Um, but I was talking about Mozilla. Uh, they were doing mobile. And, and as I said, the mobile ecosystems today, they're sort of controlled by this one company. And Mozilla's mission, uh, openness, opportunity, and, um, and uh, innovation on the web, that's not currently what's happening on mobile. So, so Mozilla's fixing that with, with the Firefox OS device. What that is, is a, a new smartphone, as you probably know, that when you boot it, it boots straight to the browser. So you just start the phone, and the only thing that it does is just enable a standard web browser, the Firefox. And the way that is working is that you have the smartphone, the hardware. Then uh, directly on top of the hardware, you have something called Gunk. It's a, small, uh, it's a small Linux kernel that just speaks to the hardware and provides this standardized interface that you can put the web browser on. It's called Gecko. It's the same as the wrenching engine in, in, in the desktop Firefox browser. And, and it just enables these standard, and it enables you to do standard uh, web, uh, web technologies uh, on the phone. 
Uh, but of course, a smartphone needs all these standard features like making calls, installing apps, sending messages and these, these things. So all these applications, they're, they're uh, bundled and called the Gaia, uh, which is put on top of Gecko. And Gaia is made just uh, with the same technologies that we're making websites today. And, and that's Firefox OS, that's how it's made. Of course, there's one piece of the puzzle missing here. Because with a standard browser today, you can't make a call. You can't send a message. And, um, and, um, and that's really what Mozilla is doing. They're enabling these things on the web. In fact, there's a whole bunch of things that a smartphone needs to be able to do that the web stack cannot do today. So all these things that, that we need to be able to do, they're, they're bundled into something called the web APIs. And, and Mozilla is pushing for these web APIs to, to become part of the web. So in the same way that WebGL was sort of like forced onto the web, even if the companies that, that make web browsers want it or not, WebGL is just becoming part of the web. And in the same way, Mozilla is trying to, to push these web APIs onto the web so that if we as developers use these APIs and if the users who are using, uh, using um, the mobile web like, like these uh, web APIs, then, then the web just has to adopt it. And, and that's really the goal of Firefox OS itself. It's not the phone, it's the web APIs. Making, making the web work on mobile. But of course, today there are things like, um, like Instagram, Snapchat, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, they're all on this device and they're not on the web. And this device, it's like, it's pixel perfect. They've perfected every pixel for so many years now that they're like years and years ahead though of any, anything that's starting out today. So how is it possible to, uh, to compete with something like this? Well, uh, Mozilla has a plan. They have a business strategy as well. Uh, this phone, it's selling for, uh, for uh, $500. Uh, it's, it's a really high-end phone. It's, it's super expensive. And, and whenever they release a phone, Google is right after them. They're, they're releasing this Nexus phone that's even more powerful than the most powerful iPhone. And, and the Nexus is almost as expensive as these shiny gadgets. Uh, but on the other hand, for the, for the lower-end smartphones, there's like, in that market, there's some Blackberries, there's some old versions of Android. It's really fragmented. It's in the, in the lower end, there's not as much competition at all as it is in the really, really high end, the, the expensive stuff. But at the same time, there's, there's now two billion people that within the next couple of years are gonna get their first smartphone because hardware is getting uh, cheaper and because there's a lot of growth in those parts of the world, in other parts of the world. And, and uh, those two billion people, they're not gonna buy a $500 uh, smart, uh, iPhone. They're gonna go for the low end market. And Firefox, it's been built from the bottom to work on really cheap hardware. It's like when, you, when you're gonna buy your first smartphone, you can all buy a, an old version of Android or you can, buy, uh, you can buy the latest and greatest Firefox OS. The, the, the version of Firefox OS that everyone's currently working on. So, so that, that could actually work because in this end of the market, it's not that much competition yet. So the first versions of Firefox OS, it won't have to compete with the latest and most shiny uh, uh, iPhones or Androids. Uh, it, can actually compete, uh, it can actually compete with, with much, much older devices, much older uh, software. And so, so for the first re releases of Firefox, this could really go well. What will happen uh, after that? No one knows. Um, and and this, is, this is really cool. This, uh, it's really cool that, that uh, Mozilla is doing that. It's actually looking really promising. And if you've been following the news, you've probably seen that a lot of these big old companies, they're all supporting Mozilla in, in Firefox OS. This is, this is uh, Mian Jan's big boss, uh, the CEO of Telnor. And, and uh, he's, he's here saying like, yeah, we'll support uh, Firefox OS and he's the one paying, our, paying us to, to work on Firefox OS. And Telefonica and Deutsche Telekom and a bunch of other companies, they're doing similar things. And the reason that they are doing this, or we are doing this for that matter, 
is that uh, mobile operators today, they're making money on data, on, on, on voice, and on messaging. But voice and messaging, that's increasingly being outcompeted out by, by better communication services like Skype and Viber and, and uh, Facebook. All these services are much better at communication services than, than what these mobile operators currently are. So, so these, oper these mobile operators, they really need to start innovating unless they're just going to deliver data. So for them, having an open web where, where, uh, or an open ecosystem where, uh, where the innovations that the users find the most useful, they're the ones who win, that's a much better bet than, than having the current ecosystems where whatever Apple or Google says goes in, goes in. So that's why all these companies are, are backing Firefox OS. They want something where they can compete on similar terms as everyone else. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Now, uh, now Jan, uh, he's going to dive into the technical stuff. So now you, we have to have notes because it's going to go super fast. It's going to be a lot of hard technical stuff.